Okay, welcome back to InDesign uh, Tutorials and in this video we're going to take a look at uh, what it is to use the tabs panel and set up our tabs. And this little exercise, you don't have to have the book that we're using, um, but we are using the Exploring Adobe InDesign CS6, so if you have that and you have the artwork resources, then this grade scale is what I'm actually bringing up on the screen. This is actually what it looks like and they've set up our tabs perfectly for us. One tab for each piece of information that we want to push over uh, to the next column and include as groupings of columns. Alright, so not everything lines up. You can see here at the bottom. Alright, this is uh, being pushed over even more. Yeah, and we're going to line it up uh, for them. So I'm going to copy um, this information. Okay, and I want to bring this over. I already have a text frame. Use my text or my type tool and copy it in, paste it in. And it's basically the default information. Turn on your hidden characters by going under Type. Show hidden characters. Okay, and uh, that'll indicate what's going on with our um, text that we're viewing. All right, I want to push this over so we can see everything clearly. And um, as I get into the t uh, t tab uh, tab panel, I do have an image for you to take a look at. Now, to get the tabs panel, I would highlight what it is we need to um, make a tab on. Go under the Type drop-down menu, and we're looking for Tabs. That has a key command set, Shift-Command-T on a Mac, Shift-Control-T on a PC, okay, and it brings up our tabs panel. Now, you can see this is really long here and I'm going to kind of zoom back um, out from it and let's move this over um, because what happens with this okay and I want to um, highlight this and you can see here it actually uh, matches from one edge of the um, ruler to this end point here and that's the length of the actual text frame. Now I've got this way too long here so I'm going to bring that back and you can open and close these a little bit more and it can float. Now what if I want it to um, stick with it? Well I can just click on this um, position panel which is basically looks like a little magnet and then as I you know scroll around this way or that. Okay, it's staying, but I could still reposition it anywhere, you know, that I have it. That's okay. Now let's take a look at different parts of it, and if you're looking in your book, there is a um, tabs panel um, in an in indication as to what the little different buttons and things on the panel are. Basically at the top we've got alignment buttons, a tab position which is the X position from the left hand side over how many inches or how far over that's the X going across. Leader is uh, that means that I could put little dots or I could put dashes or whatever it is to fill in in between the tabs and there's a, a good reason to put that something like a, ch a chapter we have a uh, you're indicating the table of contents and what chapter it belongs to, what page number. That helps a v visitor or viewer see what it belongs to without losing their place. Um, align on. Well, if you use something like I want to align everything up on a decimal or a particular thing like, um, say, a dollar sign, I can put a, some alignment on and put a character in there. Now this also shows, you know, your um, ruler, and at each end there are left indent on the left hand side, this little triangle, and on the right hand side it is a right indent, 
and those we can move around and in the left we can move around independently the first line indent which is the top little triangle and the bottom triangle is left indent the entire paragraph. So those kinds of things can be set to with tabs instead of just in the paragraph panel. Okay, so uh, last but not least we have a flyout menu which we can clear everything, uh, delete and repeat tabs, or reset our indents to zero again. Okay, so let's get back our tab panel. Um, Shift Command D. And I'm not back in it. Oh, yeah, there we go. There it is. All right, so I want to adhere it to it that. And if I want to move this over, well, it looks pretty good right now. So I want to select a left justified because you can see here everything is left hand justified. And if I want to keep that the same, I'm going to click in the panel, the little panel above it. Oh, yes, I've got a leader here. And in fact, this demonstrates what a leader actually is. I'm going to take that out. But I've got a little period here. And following and filling in where the tab is to the grouping of um, text tabular information in the next column, then it fills it in with that symbol. We can put an underscore, which is shift, and then you hit the hyphen key underscore and press return it looks like a little underline okay we use that a lot um, for um, form information so I'm going to take that out ooh, ooh, not everything just the leader okay I like that delete that and press return there we go alright so the next thing that I want to do I got the point value way out here and I've got these all over the place so let's see about clicking in here and the next thing is if you click on your tab and in the top uh, and on top of the ruler and pull it around you can see how it lines up with it's got a line extending down from it so if I push that over it's going to follow it and it lines up to that course again I have another leader I'm going to take that out too yeah we don't need that now in this case I'd like these things to uh, we want to do um, everything lined up maybe to the decimal point okay we can do anything we want to if we wanted to take and line everything up on this first tab which is right here the first tab controls um, your first tab visually here these hidden characters that's the first tab and I could do a center justified yeah I don't have enough room for it so if I pull that over when you start working with these other alignments you've got to give it enough space and to pull it over and so that kind of um, lines it up so that it looks pretty nice let's see what's going on with the one down underneath that's that's pretty good um, we'll eyeball it. Now on this one, if I were to change this to decimal, okay, yeah, it lines up the decimals for um, all the decimal points, but what about this point value here? That's not really got a decimal, so it's kind of like um, centering it in a way. Okay, so maybe if I pull it all over, nope, it's not really centering it with it. It's just kind of an estimate, okay? So I like these where they're, where they're at, but I may have to highlight just that line if it's different from the rest. And then this tab, okay, I'm going to actually um, line it up so it's justified, okay? And what am I justifying it with? Well, why don't I just justify it with... Um, the the number four here okay so I could do another, another number but look at that um, it's not lining up exactly the way that I want to so if I go back slide this over to line up with the 10 and there we go not too bad okay 
So you have a lot of choices um, with the tabs uh, in mind. Okay, this is basic controls for tabs, and uh, we can also do indents if you grab a hold of the bottom little triangle. You can push these things over. Okay, a paragraph. Okay, I'm kind of crowding it, and then the right hand indent. Okay, if I really needed to push that over, then. Of course, that's just kind of limiting what's going on um, in, within my text frame. So uh, watch out as to what those two are. We could use them um, in the future. All right, in the next video, we're going to do like a little history um, lesson. Actually, we're going to do a, a little project, and it's this one, uh, Family History. And we'll go through that tutorial together. See you then.